This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made, that the Lord has made. So we will rejoice, we will rejoice and be glad in it and be glad in him. Oh, this is the day that the Lord has made. So we will rejoice and be glad in him. Oh, this is the day and this is his way that the Lord has made. Yes, this is the way he has made. He has presented, he has given, he has showed us, he has given us abundantly his word. His word on this September 16. September 16, we are reading from the incredible book of Isaiah. And today we will begin with chapter 22. Chapter 22 of Isaiah. Please, if you would just go right there and join in. And if you don't know, if you're, or if you're brand new to run across this site today, I am reading from the New King James Bible. New King James, okay? All the these and the thous have been replaced with our modern day way of talking. And so it makes it easier. And that's the reason that I read this one. So that someone who's never heard the word of God will be able to receive it in the way that we speak today. So let's see what Isaiah has to say. And we are deep into the section of the burdens. The burdens. Oh my goodness. What do you think of when you say the word burden? Burden, something very heavy on you, right? Maybe physically heavy, something you think is heavier than you can carry. When I think of young mothers and all trying to manage children who are now 10, 11, 12, and they have to be the ones to try to lift them out of a wheelchair or whatever. Whatever you picture as the burden, the Lord told Isaiah, a lot that he referred then to the people. Isaiah 22, the burden against the valley of vision. What ails you now that you have all gone up to the housetops? You who are full of noise, a tumultuous city, a joyous city? That's got a question mark on it. Your slain men are not slain with the sword, nor dead in battle, all your rulers have fled together. They are captured by the archers, an enemy with archers. All who are found in you are bound together. They have fled from afar. Therefore I said, look away from me. <clears throat> I will weep bitterly. <clears throat> Do not labor to comfort me because of the plundering of the daughter of my people. For it is a day of trouble and treading down and perplexity by the Lord God of hosts in the valley of vision. Breaking down the walls and of crying to the mountain. Elam bore the quiver with chariots of men and horsemen. And Kir uncovered the shield. It shall come to pass that your choicest valleys shall be full of chariots, and the horsemen shall set themselves in array at the gate. He removed the protection of Judah. You looked in that day to the armor of the house of the forest. You also saw the damage to the city of David, that it was great. And you gathered together the waters of the lower pool. You numbered the houses of Jerusalem and the houses you broke down to fortify the wall. You also made a reservoir between the two walls for the water of the old pool. But you did not look to its maker I'm going to say that one again. But you did not look to its maker, nor did you have respect for him 
who fashioned it long ago. And in that day, the Lord God of hosts called for weeping and for mourning, for baldness and for girding with sackcloth. But instead, joy and gladness, slaying oxen and killing sheep, eating meat and drinking wine. Let us eat and drink, for tomorrow we die. That's what the people were saying. They just blew off any judgment or condemnation coming from the Lord and just went ahead in a party spirit every day. <clears throat> Listen up, America. And then it was revealed in my hearing by the Lord of hosts, surely for this iniquity there will be no atonement for you, even to your death says the Lord God of hosts. That's what he had to say about it. Thus says the Lord God of hosts, Isaiah is telling them, Go, proceed to this steward, to Shebna, who is over the house, and say, What have you here? And whom have you here? That you have hewn a sepulcher here as he who hews himself a sepulcher on high, who carves a tomb for himself in a rock. Indeed, the Lord will throw you away violently. O oh, mighty man, he will surely seize you. He will surely turn violently and toss you like a ball into a large country and there you shall die, and there your glorious chariots shall be the shame of your master's house. So I will drive you out of your office, and from your position he will pull you down. And then it shall be in that day that I will call my servant Eliakim, the son of Hilkiah. I will clothe him with your robe and strengthen him with your belt. I will commit your responsibility into his hand. He shall be a father to the inhabitants of Jerusalem and to the house of Judah. <coughs> Excuse me. The key of the house of David I will lay on his shoulder. So he shall open, and no one shall shut. And he shall shut, and no one shall open. I will fasten him as a pig in a secure place, and he will become a glorious throne to his father's house. They will hang on him all the glory of his father's house, the offspring and the posterity, all vessels of small quantity, from the cups to all the pitchers. In that day, says the Lord of hosts, the peg that is fastened to the secure place will be removed and be cut down and fall, and the burden that was on it will be cut off <clears throat> for the Lord has spoken. Wow, heavy words today, my precious brothers and sisters. We move along now to the 23rd chapter of Isaiah, Yarmiyahu, the burden against Tyre. Now we're going to talk about another place. Whale, you ships of Tarshish, for it is laid waste so that there is no house, no harbor, from the land of Cyprus it is revealed to them. Be still, you inhabitants of the coastland, you merchants of Sidon, whom those who cross the sea have filled, and on great waters the grain of Shehor. The harvest of the river is her revenue, and she is a marketplace for the nations. 
Be ashamed, O Sidon, for the sea has spoken, the strength of the sea, saying, I do not labor nor bring forth children, neither do I rear young men nor bring up virgins. When the report reaches Egypt, they also will be in agony at the report of Tyre. Cross over to Tarshish. Wail, you inhabitants of the coastland. <clears throat> Is this your joyous city? <clears throat> Pardon me. Whose antiquity is from ancient days? Whose feet carried her far off to dwell? Who has taken this counsel against Tyre, the crowning city? Whose merchants are princes? Whose traders are the honorable of the earth? The Lord of hosts has purposed it to bring to dishonor the pride of all glory, to bring into contempt all the honorable of the earth. And what does it say here caused it? Pride. Pride. Overflow through your land like the river, O daughter of Tarshish. There is no more strength. He stretched out his hand over the sea. He shook the kingdoms. The Lord has given a commandment against Canaan to destroy its strongholds. And he said, You will rejoice no more, O oh, you oppressed virgin daughter of Sidon. Arise, cross over to Cyprus. There also you will have no rest. Behold the land of the Chaldeans, this people which was not. Assyria founded it for wild beasts of the desert. They set up its towers. They raised up its palaces and brought it to ruin. Wail, you ships of Tarshish, for your strength is laid waste. Now it shall come to pass in that day that Tyre will be forgotten 70 years. Forgotten 70 years. According to the days of one king, at the end of 70 years it will happen to Tyre as in the song of the harlot. And this is in quotations. This is the song that the harlots sang. Take a harp, go about the city, you forgotten harlot. Make sweet melody, sing many songs, that you may be remembered. And that's the end of the quote. And it shall be at the end of 70 years that the Lord will deal with Tyre. She will return to her higher and commit fornication with all the kingdoms of the world on the face of the earth. Commit fornication. That takes in many areas of life the Lord is talking about. Her gain and her pay will be set apart for the Lord. It will not be treasured nor laid up, for her gain will be for those who dwell before the Lord to eat sufficiently and for fine clothing. Then <clears throat> we move right along to chapter 24. Behold, the Lord makes the earth empty and makes it waste, distorts its surface and scatters abroad its inhabitants. And it shall be as with the people so with the priest, as with the servant, so with his master, as with the maid, so with her mistress, as with the buyer, so with the seller, as with the lender, so with the borrower, as with the creditor, 
so with the debtor. The land shall be entirely emptied and utterly plundered. <clears throat> and that is how they found the land of Israel back in the early 1900s, isn't it? Desolate. Desolate. Nothing growing. Sand blowing. The land shall be entirely emptied and utterly plundered, for the Lord has spoken this word. The earth mourns and fades away. The world languishes and fades away. The haughty people of the earth languish. The earth is also defiled under its inhabitants because they have transgressed the laws, changed the ordinance, broken the everlasting covenant. Therefore the curse has devoured the earth and those who dwell in it are desolate. Therefore the inhabitants of the earth are burned and few men are left. The new wine fails, the wine languishes, all the merry-hearted sigh, the mirth of the tambourine ceases, the noise of the jubilant ends, the joy of the harp ceases. They shall not drink wine with a song, Strong drink is bitter to those who drink it. The city of confusion is broken down. Every house is shut up so that none may go in. Shut up. What does that mean? Boarded up? Can't go in. There is a cry for wine in the streets. All joy is darkened. The mirth of the land is gone. In the city, desolation is left, and the gate is stricken with destruction. When it shall be thus in the midst of the land among the people, it shall be like the shaking of an olive tree, like the gleaning of grapes when the vintage is done. They shall lift up their voice, they shall sing. For the majesty of the Lord, they shall cry aloud from the sea. Therefore, glorify the Lord in the dawning light. The name of the Lord God of Israel in the coastlands of the sea. From the ends of the earth we have heard songs. Glory to the righteous, glory to the righteous. But I said, I am ruined, ruined. Woe is me. The treacherous dealers have dealt treacherously. Indeed, the treacherous dealers have dealt very treacherously. Fear and the pit and the snare are upon you, O inhabitant of the earth. And it shall be that he who flees from the noise of the fear shall fall into the pit. And he who comes up from the midst of the pit shall be caught in the snare. For the windows from on high are open and the foundations of the earth are shaken. Are we feeling and seeing a little bit of this kind of a description today? The earth is violently broken. The earth is split open. The earth is shaken exceedingly. The earth shall reel to and fro like a drunkard and shall totter like a hut. 
its transgression shall be heavy upon it, and it will fall and not rise again. Fall and not rise again. It shall come to pass in that day that the Lord will punish on high the host of the exalted ones, and on the earth the kings of the earth. They will be gathered together as prisoners are gathered in the pit and will shut up and they will be shut up in the prison. After many days, they will be punished. Now that's a fearsome line, isn't it? After many days, they will be punished. And then the moon will be disgraced. And the sun, S-U-N, ashamed. For the Lord of hosts will reign on Mount Zion and in Jerusalem and before his elders gloriously, gloriously. I pray that you go over all that again for yourself. And I encourage you to read it out loud. Because faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word. So if you read the word out loud with your voice, your ears hear it. And that is very important. Usually when we sit down in a chair, and we pick up something to read, and we just read it silently, we have all kinds of wandering thoughts. Suddenly we're hungry. Suddenly we're thirsty. Suddenly we're thinking of other things we need to do. Suddenly we're thinking of the clothes that didn't get folded yet in the dryer, blah, 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 right? But if you sit down and begin to read out loud, you will pay attention. And like me this morning, you will correct if you don't say a line right according to the commas or the periods. Please. That's what we're about here, to get the Word of God out and to grow in it ourselves. All right, let's move along, my precious friends. And we are reading the great epistle, Galatians. We are in chapter 2, and we have already begun reading, so we will pick up with verse 17. Galatians chapter 2, verse 17. But if... While we seek to be justified by Christ, we ourselves also are found sinners. Is Christ therefore a minister of sin? Certainly not. For if I build again those things which I destroyed, I make myself a transgressor. For I, through the law, we're referring to the Torah for them. I, through the law, died to the law, that I might live to God. I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. I do not set aside the grace of God, for if righteousness comes through the law, then Christ died in vain. And we move along to chapter 3 of Galatians. Oh, foolish Galatians! Who has bewitched you that you should not obey the truth? Before your eyes, Jesus Christ was clearly portrayed among you as crucified. That's a question. This only I want to learn from you. Did you receive the Spirit by the works of the law? Or by the hearing of faith? 
Are you so foolish? Having begun in the spirit, are you now being made perfect by the flesh? And the answer is no. Have you suffered so many things in vain, if indeed it was in vain? Therefore, he who supplies the Spirit to you and works miracles among you, does he do it by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? Just as Abraham, and now we're going to quote, Paul is going to quote here, Genesis 15, verse 6. This is a quote from clear back to Genesis chapter 15, verse 6. Just as Abraham, and here's the quote, believed God, and it was accounted to him for righteousness. Simply by believing. That's the way it is today. What do you have to do to be saved from eternal death and punishment? Believe. Believe his word. Therefore know that only those who are of faith are sons of Abraham. And the scripture for seeing that God would justify the Gentiles by faith, preached the gospel to Abraham beforehand. And this is what he said to Abraham. <clears throat> and this is from Genesis 12, 3, 18, 18, 22, 18, 26, 4, 28, 14. And here is what is said. In you. All the nations shall be blessed. So then, this, so then those who are of faith are blessed with believing Abraham. It's like an understanding is opened up to you. And you can understand more and more how Abraham started out and kept on going. All right, we turn farther to the psalm today. And today we will read Psalm 60. <clears throat> psalm 60. Please excuse my scratchy throat. Oh God, you have cast us off says David, and it says here it was for teaching. And the situation happening at the time, it was when he fought against Mesopotamia and Syria of Zobah, and Joab returned and killed 12,000 Enabites, Edomites in the Valley of Salt. So that's what was going on when David brought these words forth. Oh God, you have cast us off. You have broken us down. You have been displeased. Oh, restore us again. You have made the earth tremble. You have broken it. Heal its breaches, for it is shaking. You have shown your people hard things. You have made us drink the wine of confusion. You have given a banner to those who fear you, that it may be, that it may be displayed because of the truth. And there we have inserted that famous little word, Selah. Selah, stop. Contemplate this. Think about it. Prostrate yourself for it that your beloved may be delivered. Save with your right hand and hear me. God has spoken in his holiness. I will rejoice. I will divide Shechem 
and me measure out the valley of Sukkot. Gilead is mine, and Manasseh is mine. Ephraim also is the helmet for my head. Ephraim also is the helmet for my head. Did you get that? Judah is my lawgiver. Moab is my wash pot. Look up wash pot. That's not a word we use. Over Edom, I will cast my shoe. And that also has great meaning. They did things reaching down to get their shoe. Philistia, shout in triumph because of me. Who will bring me to the strong city? Who will lead me to Edom? Is it not you, O oh God, who cast us off? And you, O oh God, who did not go out with our armies, give us help from trouble. For the help of man is useless. Through God, we will do valiantly. For it is he who shall tread down our enemies. It is he. They were realizing that. It didn't matter if the army was thousands and thousands or very few. It was having God put favor on you. For it is he who shall tread down our enemies. There, David is not giving credit to the soldiers, is he? He's giving credit to God. And that's who we need to give credit to today, don't we? All right, let's wrap it all up. My precious brothers and sisters, God bless you for being here. Hallelujah. Kathy, your graphics are great. Melissa, thank you for putting stuff on. Connie, bless you for documenting and documenting. And thank you to all of you other brothers and sisters, you dear friends and sometimes people from other countries come across our broadcast here. Did you know that? I don't know them. God did it. It's his word. And I ask him every day, please, this, I'm just reading it, Father God. This is your word. Please take it to everyone that you want it to go to. Cause them to stumble across it somehow. Everybody in the world spends time thumbing their phone, thumbing their phone, scrolling up, scrolling down, going sideways. Let them hear the word of God. And now here is the last nugget, wonderful nugget from Proverbs chapter 23, verses 15 and 16. Proverbs, Mishle, chapter 23, verses 15 and 16. My son, if your heart is wise, my heart will rejoice. Indeed, I myself. If your heart is wise, he is saying to the son, we can say it to our sons and to our daughters, if your heart is wise, my heart will rejoice. Indeed, I myself, yes, my inmost being will rejoice when your lips speak right things. Right things. Which begs the question, how do we know they're right things? We'll know if we read his word and take it in and change our sinful minds to line up with his wisdom. Hallelujah. That's a beautiful little proverb to write out and put on the refrigerator. That place that we go to too often, 
put it right on there by the handle so that your eyes glance at it. It's a wonderful, wonderful way to learn the word of the Lord. Put it somewhere in front of you. Bathroom mirror, front door going out, so that you go out the front door thinking about the Lord. Let's pray. Precious Father God, we are blessed today to have your word. We are so thankful and grateful to you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you that we still freely have it in our hands. Many places in the world yet where they are not allowed. They have to hide if they have a Bible. They have to read it, looking this way and that way, making sure nobody sees it. Many places like that yet. Father God, we'd ask that you would raise up even more workers, more evangelists, more teachers, and send them to the places on the earth, the little pockets where they haven't heard yet, where they haven't heard. Father God, please, I, I ask you, be with the translators today who are working very hard on very little known dialects, different languages that maybe are only in the deep, desert or the deep forest or jungle and they are working diligently to translate the word into what they can give them what they can give them and so father god we are blessed and we thank you for this our hearts rejoice as we think of all the people who are diligently giving their lives to go out and be witnesses, to travel everywhere, no matter how dangerous, to bring God's word. Thank you for that, Lord. Protect them, please, with your mighty right hand. Father God, we hold up Jerusalem and we hold up Israel. And we hold up the IDF, the Israeli Defense Forces. And we hold up Prime Minister Bibi Minetin. Yahoo, Benjamin Nitin Yahoo. We hold him up to you, Lord. And we'd ask that you would give wisdom to all of them today for whatever struggle is going on at this moment, wherever they are, whatever tunnel they are bravely going down into to see if there are any people alive that they can rescue, to see if there are dead bodies, Jewish dead bodies, that they can bring back to the families, to their loved ones, that they can finally have an answer in their heart. Precious Lord, we pray very serious prayers for Israel, we pray for all the enemies, Lord, who live all around them in lands 50 times bigger than little tiny Israel. And Lord, we'd ask that Holy Ghost, Ruach HaKodesh, would go to them, would bring love and understanding to them, Brave people, Lord, who will go no matter what the risk. For they are supposed to hear, too. They need to hear. And Lord, we'd ask, please, bring many. Open up their ears. Open up their eyes. Open up their spirits and their hearts. That when they hear, it will sink in. They will know. They will be excited to hear that there is word from one God who controls the earth and all the heavens. And let them hear the glorious message that he loves them, that he loves them, that he, that he can forgive them, that they can walk with him 
And they can have joy instead of hatred. Hatred can leave. The desire to kill and destroy can leave those ugly demonic spirits. And the wonderful Holy Spirit can come in. Please, Father God, I ask you, please help them today. Lord, we have many people on our lists. People we've written down, people, some of them we've prayed for a long, long time. But I encourage you, don't quit. Don't quit. Keep on keeping on. Don't allow weariness to overtake you. But claim the joy of the Lord because the joy of the Lord is your strength. So keep on lifting up people, situations, countries, rulers, dangers today. Lift it all up unto the Lord. Let us be prayer warriors. All in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And Father God, I want to give you great thanksgiving that President Trump was not murdered yesterday. I give you great thanks. And I'd ask, Lord, that you would keep your wonderful hand of protection upon him, his life, where he goes, what he does, the people that are with him that are to protect him, his family, Lord, I'd ask that you would comfort his family today from the shocking trauma of yesterday. And we will believe for today. And all of God's people went ahead with your own prayers. Cried a hearty amen. And reach out and love all the people you know. Bye-bye.